Oh, hello! My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. So there has been a tag going on or like a video concept going around on beauty YouTube recently called 20 best or worst products from 20 brands in under 20 minutes. And I have really enjoyed watching those. Uh, they're just a quick way to kind of see some of the best and worst from various brands. And the idea behind it is that, if, especially if you pick the same 20 brands for the best and for the worst, you can just get kind of a sense of the fact that like, hey, every brand has things that work and every brand has some things that are also kind of duds. And I thought that this would be a super fun idea to bring to BookTube and uh, talk about 20 of the best books from 20 authors and 20 of the worst books from the same authors with the exact same spirit in mind of like, every author has like better and worse books. And it can just kind of be fun, I think, to acknowledge that and talk through like, I don't know, what do you think the best book from an author that you've read several books from really is? Now, here's the thing, you can't, there's some people who just have done this on the beauty side where they just pick 20 bad products um, for each list and they don't necessarily match up on the brands. I thought that it would be fairer and more fun to pick one author and pick their best and worst for each list. So today we are talking about the worst books from these 20 authors and then in a couple of weeks I'll post the 20 best books from those authors and I try to be as objective about this as I can now like objectivity is kind of not fully possible but I tried to put my hat on of what I think their actual quality wise best and worst book was and not just what my personal favorite or least favorite is and so um, a lot of these are books that I really like um, even on the worst list which is what we're doing today most of these are books that I still really like I'll tell you when I don't actually really like them or if I think they're just meh or whatever but um, I tried to pick authors that I'd read enough of their work that I felt like I could have some level of real assessment on the quality and, and give you my best feeling about where their strengths and weaknesses are. So anyway, the other part of this is to do it in under 20 minutes and I've already talked a lot. So like, let's jump in. So today we're doing these 20 authors, their worst books. And like I said, in a couple weeks, we'll do the 20 best. And you guys also, I should say side note, will notice in these lists that I do have a lot of genre authors on here and less literary or um, kind of authors that I tend to just read one off things from them. Uh, and that's just because genre books, I'm, they're more likely to have series, they're more likely to have enough volume of work for me to feel like I've read more than just two or three books from them to make an assessment. So let's get into it. Okay, number one is Alona Andrews. And the worst book I think Alona Andrews has written that I have read is Magic Bites. This is from the, the jump, a divergence between my personal least favorite and what I think objectively is probably the worst because my personal least favorite is probably Magic Rises, but I think it's probably objectively better than this book. That said, this is still a real, like this is a three star book. This is not a bad book. It just, I think it's not as cohesive and clear as pretty much all of their other books are. So I felt like this, you know, and the fact that they themselves even tell you not to start with this book in the Kate Daniel series, I just feel like it's fair to say this is probably their worst. Number two is Nalini Singh, and I ended up going with Tangle of Need from the Side Changeling series. There were, the, again, this is an example of like where my personal preference and trying to be somewhat objective in terms of the quality here kind of tripped me up because I would say that I personally like several of the Guild Hunter series books less than this. And the one book that I was really back on forth if this was the worst or if it was, was the first book in her Rock series, which is like a contemporary romance series. I think that one's called Rock Rebel or Rock Hard. I can't remember, but that first book, it was between that one and this. But ultimately, I really think that this is probably the least successful book I've read from her in terms of quality because I think that she violates the kind of terms of her own world a little bit too much. And while I appreciate the kind of thought experiment that was a part of this, I don't think that was wholly successful in selling me that this was something that was gonna work long term. So anyway, I ultimately went with this and I should probably take the sticker off the middle of his face. But anyway, this is what I think her worst book is. Number three is C.S. Lewis's The Last Battle. And 
I don't, I, this is another one that I really struggled with which one to pick because I, I possibly would say that maybe one of the space trilogy could have been in the, in the worst category. He has a couple of weaker nonfiction picks that I think aren't the best, but he's an author, like when I was really thinking through, I, I think that the ending of this, particularly the issue of Susan in this, while it is philosophically and ideologically consistent for him, I think that this ends up being something that really lets a lot of readers of this series down. Like, I think that this is noticeably worse than the rest of what is a really iconic series. And so even though he's maybe the author I've read the most from and struggled with the most of what to pick as the worst, I, I think this is at least today where I would land as his worst book. Number four is Agatha Christie. And this was one of the easier picks for me because I've read the worst book that I've ever read from her last year. So it is fresh in my mind. And that is Passengers to Frankfurt. That book is a hot garbage mess, in my opinion. It is, it has none of her characteristic charm, really. I mean, like there's moments of it, but ooh, it is, it is tough stuff. I think I gave that one and a half stars. It is real bad. Um, and it was written late in her life. I don't think that's like a controversial opinion to pick it as her worst, but yikes, it is not good. Number five is JK Rowling. And this is another one where my taste versus like trying to be objective kind of went back and forth because I probably, as I, this book is poor quality and makes me mad, but it is also meant to be a stage play. It is somewhat of a cash grab. So like, I don't, I don't know. Like I kind of wrestled, like taste wise, I couldn't decide if I thought this was worse or I really don't like her Robert Galbraith books at all. But I ultimately, because those books, I think, even though they're not my taste, I think they're objectively pretty good for what they are. Um, I decided to go with this and yeah, I just, this is bad in my opinion. I, again, a controversial one somewhat, but I think that this is like clearly the worst thing she's read. And again, it was sort of a cash grab. So I'm like, should I really count it since it's meant to be a play? But I decided to go for it because yeah, I really think that this is bad. And like, uh, I choose in my mind to not think of this as canon because it just makes me angry. So I just like exclude it from my head canon. Okay, number six is Nora Roberts, aka J.D. Robb. And I decided I was back and forth between the one that I ultimately picked, which was Innocent and Death versus Angels Fall, uh, because I think they're both pretty weak for different reasons. I think Angels Fall reads to me, it just is, it's a weird, she does, her character work isn't there. And um, I think the plot just doesn't make up for it. It's a standalone suspense -y kind of thing. But I ultimately decided to go with Innocent in Death just because it is so universally hated within the In Death fandom because there is a real character goof I think in this in terms of her characterization of the dynamic between Eve and Rourke and this is a situation basically where the grovel does not match the crime and I think it makes readers mad. I'm one of those readers so I decided that I would pick this. I still gave it two stars because actually the mystery in it is pretty good but the character work which is really what brings me back to that series is noticeably worse than the rest of the series. Number seven is My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. Now I still gave this one three stars, but again, I think that this is one that within people who read Christina Lauren, a lot of people agree is not one of her best because there is a central deception that really undermines your feeling at the end of the book that there's a satisfying resolution. Um, I actually probably personally did not like Rumi's even more just because of the political situation that it implies in terms of like a visa and getting married for a visa in the US just with how things are right now it felt a little icky to me but I think there's I've seen more people be more angry about this one so I would pick it probably as the worst one but again I still gave it three stars there's a lot of people who really like it I don't think it's terrible just not one of the better ones number eight is Mariana Zapata and for her I decided to go with under lock just because I think that this is one of the few examples in her books where the hero the is just a jerk and like, I still love this book. Like I still reread it a lot and it delivers an alpha trope better than I think a lot of other people do. 
Um, but I think objectively, a lot of people point to that book as like, it was, I think either her first or second book, and it's just not one of her best ones. Um, I think it was, I was between that one and Lingus, which I actually think Lingus probably is her first one. And both of them, I think the writing quality is noticeably worse. And I think that some of the character dynamic things are really off. And in Underlock in particular, it's just not, it doesn't read like a typical Mariana Zapata. So that's why I picked that one as the worst. But again, I still gave it three stars and still reread it. <laughs> Number nine is Dorothy Sayers. Now, to be honest, I hesitated to put her on here just because it's been a hot minute since I've read these books. But from my memory, the one that I always think of as the worst of the ones that I can remember reading from her is Five Red Herrings. And that's just because I feel like it's a book that is all about just like figuring out timelines. And she's also got it set in Scotland and she tries to write the Scottish brogue, which I find, if I'm remembering rightly anyway, I found really grating. Uh, so I picked this one as the worst one. I don't think it's terrible. I just think that it's not a great use of Peter Whimsey from what I remember. Number 10 is Graham Greene. And I picked Orient Express as my worst one from him. Again, I gave this three stars. I didn't hate this, but he viewed this as one of his like entertainments. Like he viewed this as like a lighter, fluffier book. And I think if that is kind of the genre he was envisioning for it, it is not successful because I don't think it's very entertaining. I think it's kind of a tedious book. Um, not the worst. And I always enjoy spending time reading his writing, basically. Again, three stars. But I just think of the Graham Green I've read, to me, it's like noticeably the worst quality. Number 11 is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Now, this is one where as I reread him as an adult, my opinion may change. But this is one of the ones that I have reread as an adult. I had to reread it in grad school. I gave it three stars. Again, this isn't bad. I just don't think that this is one of the better Dickens. Like, I think that this works more on the level of like ideas than it does story. So for that reason, I just don't think it's as entertaining or as memorable as a lot of the other stuff that I've read from him. Number 12 is Noelle Adams, and I believe I chose Protecting His Best Friend's Sister from her on this one. She co-wrote this with Samantha Young, and I think that there is a noticeable change in the writing quality on this one, and the characters are just assholes. And I think it reads so much more new adult, which I think it's meant to. I think it's meant to be new adult, but like for Noelle Adams, it just doesn't have any part of what I think her strength is, is the maturity of her characters and like that the people in her romances are grown ups and have like grown up conflicts. And to me, this is a noticeable departure from that. So I think this is probably the worst one I've read from her. I was between this one and Substitute Bride, which is one that she just wrote by herself. But again, I didn't hate either of these, but I just don't think it's her best. Number 13 is Kristen Ashley unquestionably the one that I well questionably I guess because I also thought about putting with everything I am because that was also hot, hot garbage but Raid by Christina Ashley made me furious I hated that book it is just about it's like it's it's trying to show abuse as romance and abuse is not romance it is abuse and I hated it so so much it is terrible Number 14 is Jessica Clare. And I went back and forth because I do think she has several in her oeuvre that are weaker, but I decided to go with Ice Games as the weakest one because I, I ultimately just decided that this was the one that the romance, which is like the main event of her books, was the least credible to me in this one. And the characters were so, like, you didn't want them to get good things in life. Basically, I didn't anyway. Um, and it is in that series, a noticeable drop in quality, I think. So I decided to go with that one as her worst one. But I still gave that one, I think, two and a half stars, two or two and a half stars. Like it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. I just think for her, it wasn't her best. The next one is Susan Mallory, and there's a couple of ones from her I really don't like. I decided to go with Accidentally Yours. And if I'm remembering rightly, this is the one where there's a single mom and the romance is with her boss and I think her kid is sick and it just like, it's meant to be like lighthearted and mad, like rom com -y, and it just didn't play well, if I'm remember, Like I remember just reading this being like, oh, oh no, this is, this was in my early days of reading romance and I was reading it thinking, this is what I thought all romances were like and they are not, but this one is and it was bad. I didn't like it. Number 16 is Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. And basically, I just think that, and I don't think this is a controversial opinion, her novels are not as good as her short stories. They just aren't. And I think Wise Blood is worse 
than is the other one, The Violent Bear It Away. Yeah. I think Wise Blood is worse than The Violent Bear, Bear It Away, and I just think it's not good. Like, it's wholly unmemorable. If she had only written novels, she would be completely forgotten in the history of literature. But yeah, I, I just think Wise Blood is not good, really. Like, it's mediocre at best. Though it does, you know, it does still have her sort of, like, stylistic flares, which I guess make it a little better. I mean, it, to me, it's just like three stars. It's not great. Number 17 is Penny Reed, and I decided to go with The Hooker and The Hermit. I think that this is an earlier Penny Reed, and I don't think that she'd really found her authorial voice fully yet. Like, there's moments of it, but overall, I just don't, I don't think it's one of her good ones. It's not one I would especially recommend. It goes on sale for like 99 cents or zero dollars sometimes on Kindle. So if you get it for that, like, sure. But otherwise, yeah, I just don't think it's that great. Number 18 is Lindsay Sands. And I think probably the worst book that I've read from her is Twice Bitten, which was uh, one of the most recent entries in her Argent of Vampire series. And it just was kind of a mess. And the thing that I decided just ultimately made it so low for me is that it is supposed to be a romance. And there is negative chemistry between the two people who are supposed to be falling in love. There's also like a horrific implication of a betrayal from a family member that I don't think is fully addressed. So yeah, I just think that this is not good. Definitely the worst one from her that I have read. Number 19 is Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and I really like her YA mysteries. I would say of the YA mysteries from her that I have read, I would probably say Little White Lies is the worst. It's one of the ones that came out last year, I believe. It came out last year, I believe, and it wasn't bad. Like, I gave this three stars, but I just think the dual timeline didn't work, in my opinion. You guys know that I'm kind of a picky-ass bitch about that, so maybe that's part of it, but I don't think that the dual timeline worked, and... It was trying to portray a certain type of Southern culture, like this kind of dub scene, which I kind of know a little bit about just from growing up. And I don't know that it fully captured that to my satisfaction. So again, three stars. I don't think it's terrible. It's just not the best of what I have read from her. And then number 20, uh, Katie Wilde. I decided to include her just because I've been reading so much of her recently. And um, yeah, I would say that the worst thing that I've read from her probably so far is Beauty and Spring. Three stars, not terrible. I just think that it was a novella that was not fully realized in terms of like its conceit. And um, that's unusual because I think that she generally does novellas really well. It's part of what I like about her. And I just think that this was a weaker one. Um, not the worst, but just not her best. Okay, so that was my 20 worst books from 20 authors in under 20 minutes. I'm going to have fun trying to edit that down and to be under 20 minutes. And you guys will see very soon my 20 best books from 20 authors in under 20 minutes. So look for that. That will be the sister video here soon. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. I think that will do it. Hope you're having a great day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!